Let's take a moment to go over the different views available to you in Resolution. When you first open a project for the first time, unless you've pre-designed and saved in a different view, it's going to open a top view by default. So if you open up a new project, top view will be the default view you open to. This is your plan view, um, the plan view of your venue. Next up would be front view. And this is basically perspective from audience to front of house. So you're essentially looking at the front of house in this case. It's important to note if you do want to utilize it in this manner, um, as we've designed it, the XY intersection needs to be configured in a very specific way. And I'll click back on top view. So basically, the edge of your stage should be resting directly on the Y axis. And your coverage area should be to the right. And then the middle of the stage should be centered on the X axis. So that intersection is essentially middle of stage, edge of stage. And this way, when you click on front view, because we're using that intersection essentially as our reference point, now you're looking at the, the front of house view that we've designed it to be. Um, feel free to get creative with it if you would like, but the way that we've intended it to use is, is, is referencing that XY intersection essentially as the, the front of stage. I'm going to skip this icon here. This is slice view and go into side view. This is essentially your section view of the venue. And lastly, we have free view. This is a three dimensional view, uh, three dimensional ISO view of your venue. So I want to focus today mostly on slice view. This is a newer view that we have, and it may be uh, slightly confusing to those of you who haven't had a chance to use it. And it may be confusing simply because Side view and slice view on the surface look very similar. If you look to the top right, you can see there's a few more options that allow you um, a few more options that you can select uh, to determine how you're seeing a response in the room. Um, but before we get into that, let's go back to side view. And so what side view essentially is, is you're going to pick a point on the Y axis and you're either going to manually enter it. So let's say we want to look at five feet, and in this case, this is five feet from center of stage, or select an array, let's say house right, and it knows its position on the y-axis, it's going to auto-fill that out for me. If you do want to utilize a feature like that, um, this select array button here gives you several options in terms of updating the position, um, or the cross-section, rather, that you want to, that you want to analyze. So we have array selected, um, there's also surface selected. You could do both array or surface selected, meaning whether you're clicking on an array or surface, each time you click around, it's going to update um, your position based off of what's selected. Or if you just never want it to update, just choose never update, and then you can manually enter your Y position as needed. I like to leave it as array selected. This is conducive for my workflow, but feel free to do whatever works best for you. And so if I turn on my mapping, and this takes a bit, so I'm going to speed up the process, but I'll click SPL. It's going to map for this room. And here, what I'm looking at now is a response at that exact plane 12 feet from center of stage. So how does this differ under slice view? What I didn't point out yet is that house right and house left are both towed in. So they have an aim angle of negative 10. So they're aiming towards the middle of the room. So when you're looking at that cross section at 12 feet from the center of stage, it's not the response that's coming directly from the speaker. That's just a response from that plane in the venue. So it's not, it's not an accurate depiction in terms of output from that array. So slice view, allows you to drill down a little bit more. So right now, um, it already knows my relative position um, because the array is selected, so it knows my x is 0, my y is 12, 12 feet from center of stage, and my aim position is negative 10. So this is my house right array. So you can manually, again, you can manually type in any of these parameters. I am going to click on my array, and now what you're looking at is the cross section of not just the position horizontally, so we're 12 feet from center stage, but we're looking at this, and then also the aim position 
aiming towards the middle of the room. So this is a more three-dimensional way and, and in a sense, a more accurate way to look at the response that's coming from your speaker. It's important to note, too, that this is a response in the whole room, meaning both arrays are on at the moment. So if you wanted to look at just a cross-section of one speaker, just make sure you solo it, um, which you can do uh, by scrolling down in properties, just tick solo. And now it's going to remap just for that one speaker. And this will give you even a more accurate depiction in terms of what is being output from that one array based off its position and its aim angle. Now, another useful feature is if you wanted to reset all of these parameters up here, simply click on Venue, and it's going to zero everything out. So if you wanted to just start over again, if you got maybe in the weeds too much, um, and you didn't want to manually re-enter everything, just click Venue, and it's going to reset everything for you. So last thing I want to address is you may be wondering, well, why do you have side view if you can just type in Y, leave everything else as zero, isn't that side view? And it is. That is exactly what side view is. So if I were to map this, this view and compare it to the side view, they'd be exactly the same. The reason why we left side view as an option is because if you go and leave slice view, um, and you go to either ISO view, or excuse me, if you go to free view, or you go to top view, and you start clicking around, and then go back to slice view, your parameters are going to default to the last known array that was selected. So it's interacting with the other views. And so if you go back to slice view after clicking around in any of the other views, you're going to have to manually reset um, your X, your Y, and your aim based on you know, what you wanted to look at the last time you were in slice view. Whereas side view is always going to save your last known uh, Y position. So if you go back to side view at any point, it's going to save that mapping. It's going to save that slice. So you can click back and constantly reference it, even if you're switching between windows. So we left that view as an option for those who maybe aren't using, um, who aren't using aim angles or just simply don't, care so much about those those details in slice view but still want the ability to reference side view as it had been in the past we left it there for you um, it's a simpler way to to utilize the section and and from that point it's just your preference whether you want to use side view or slice view they're both there for however you need to use them